Akko here, welcome to a little video on Farmcraft 4 node mechanics. This is a video that's been requested that I do by my viewers and I've recently learnt something that kind of changes what I know about this quite a lot. It turns out I've been doing this wrong. So thank you very much to Lord Raccoon and Landstrider who I play on the Utopia Cube server who between their videos and letting me know in game have actually showed me where, where I've been going wrong with this and uh, let me know what I needed to do to make sure that I get the most out of nodes that my that my main nodes eat. So there's a mechanic in Farmcraft 4 called Node Bullion. We're going to get onto some of the cool stuff later on uh, regarding it. Now, first thing I should say actually is I'm using the Resident Rise 3 mod pack here. It's got a thing in it called Torturino, a mod in it called Torturino. It adds time torches. And I've got these set to 400% speed. And I'm also using a Watch of Flow in Time from Project T, which is set to fast forward. So that means the daylight cycle is going quicker than it would normally. Maybe even going quicker than you would normally. That's me on my bar. That's me on my bar. Okay. So um, these are two mods I don't actually use, so I might not be using them correctly. <laughs> but uh, I don't use Project T much, and I don't use Torturino, so uh, I might not be using them right. But anyway, let's look at the basics, and then I'm going to cover some other stuff as well. So the basics of node bullying is a larger node will eat a smaller node. So we've got two nodes there. I've got a time torch there just to speed this up a little bit. And you'll see the smaller node is giving up aspects to the larger node. And given time, this larger node will completely, dev completely devour that one. And it will take all its aspects and draw them into itself. So what we're going to end up there is... A Pedicio Ignis Aqua node that's got more than 71 Pedicio and it'll have a certain amount of Ignis and Aqua. If we leave that on its own, it'll completely devour that and you'll get so much into there. Now, that's how I've been doing it. I've been bringing nodes to my node I'm trying to grow and letting them completely devour the the donor node, let's call it. That's not how you should be doing it. I'm going to show you that in just a minute over there. But before we go to that though, the range on this is four blocks, so one, two, three, four. That block, that node will also feed into this, but because it's further away, it doesn't seem to spark as often. You seem to get a lot more sparks when it's right next to each other. One, two, three, four, five blocks away, that will not feed to that. So that's the difference there. Now, what I said about not letting this fully drain, not letting this be totally devoured. If we were to stop this now and put a node transducer under there, which I have not got. Uh, node stabiliser even. Get a node stabiliser under there. What's going to happen is this node stabiliser is going to stop this node from devouring that and of course devouring that. So what this does, it protects the node from getting devoured itself by bigger nodes and it also stops it devouring smaller nodes. So this is not now, is now not getting this. What you should see with this is this will start regening back up some of its some of its aspect, some of its V. It won't go back to where it was full before, but it will go back up. So if you basically if you give this thing time to regen, you can get more of this into that. What you can actually get is you can get all of this into that without having to get another node. So this had if this has got 26 in and out, all 26 of this can go into there. And I'm going to show you that over there. I've got a little, little example. It's going to take a little bit of time. But I've got a little example. An example I did, this was an Ignis node and a Pedicio node. And I had a 52 Terra node there. And I've got all 52 of the Terra that, from the node there into that. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little example there. Before we do that though, just while we're on the kind of the same subject, the node stabilizer, as I said, there's two nodes here, an 82 and a 77. Now, if I was to turn this one off, got a lever, grab a lever. If I was to turn this one off, this 77, because that's on a normal node stabilizer, it cannot eat that. If I was to turn this one off, this one still cannot eat that because that's still bigger. That's an 82. That's a 77. But because this is on a, a advanced node, if that was bigger, because it's an advanced node, it could actually eat the smaller one. So when you've got when you've got 
two similar size ones well not, not similar size ones even but when you want to protect a node from getting eaten itself and still want it to eat other nodes you can have it on an advanced node stabilizer the other thing to note with these two things is if you're using these normally to put aspects onto your wand this is a creative only one by the way added by Thomecraft. well i thought it was forbidden magic i did that maybe vanilla um i did not know that then what was I going to say? Oh yeah, this will regen slower and this one will regen even slower than that one. So if you're going to use this for charging your ones, you might not want your nodes on these. Now this is another part of how I've been doing it wrong. I've been a massive Arvel players. I've got six nodes around a one to recharge pedestal. And what I should be doing is combining all six of them. I, I haven't been doing it because the way I've been doing it has been really inefficient. So I would have meant looking for a lot more nodes. Now I know I could get all 77 of that into that if i do it if i do it correctly then now i know i can do that i can build some real nice six aspects nodes it's just going to take a bit of time and this unfortunately does take a bit of time but what i've got over here we've got a nice 67 node it's also a bright node which is what you want for your if you're going to if you're going to energize your nodes i should talk about energizing first if you're going to energize your nodes it doesn't matter if they're bright or not because when they get energized it's going to be different if you are going to keep your nodes normal and use them with a one recharge pedestal for example you want a bright node as your main node because it regens quicker the node you feed into it shouldn't matter so what i'm going to do with this i'm going to turn off this node stabilizer what that's going to do it's going to start feeding this so that was 42 was it a 42 i believe it was a 42 so what we're going to do is we're going to let this drain pretty much all the way down but before it gets to zero I'm going to turn this back on and we'll let that go back up to uh, how it was. You see that's draining down pretty quick. And we've got seven into there already, eight into there. So let's give this a minute or two. Let it get down to a smallish number. Uh, right, so that'll do. So we'll let that drain back, we'll let that go back up. So that's now I'm going to recharge. It won't go all the way to 42, but it will go back up. Well, we're just waiting for that to come back up. So the other thing is energize nodes. I just wanted to cover really quick. Energizer node, this is just a single Ignis one. You will need these if you do the advanced alchemical fairness things, which is pretty much end game farmcraft stuff, because you need to feed the fairness with Ignis to heat it up, Pedicio to break things down, and I think the Aqua's optional, but Aqua to increase the speed of getting stuff out of it. Right. If we turn on a transducer on top of a node that's on a stabilizer, it has to be on a stabilizer or the transducer wouldn't work. What we're going to get, that's 78 there is going to turn into an energized eight because it's i think it's square root plus one so I've, I've been playing around with this if you do a 64 it'll become a seven so if you do a 65 i think it'll become an eight so the square root of our course of eight is 64 but 64 only gives you a seven node so i think you have to go square root plus one give that a little bit of time and uh, that will turn into an energized eight so i'll come over here in the meantime that's gone back up to 40. It looks like it stopped going back up. So we can turn that on again. And now we can start draining it again. So basically what you want to do is you want to be keeping an eye on this. Now, of course, without the time torches, it's going to be a lot longer. For resonant RAS, well, I've got a method there that you can use to automate this. I'm going to show you at the end of the video. Well, we'll come back to that in a minute. We'll let this drain down again once this gets down. Now, this is draining down a lot quicker. I don't know if this is because this is bright, it makes it drain quicker as well but this is uh, the second take i've done of this because i'm i'm playing around and doing a couple of things I'm doing a couple of things wrong stopping recording when i was meant to just go in and put in the video into quick stuff like that so this is draining a lot quicker than it was before so i don't know if that being bright helps that which uh, is also good to know if it is right, up to 15 there now we'll see what that goes back up to so this should be an energized node now it is look and it's eight what you can do with this is if we were to break that stabilizer, it'd explode. If we were to break the transducer, it'd explode. If we take the redstone signal off, then what's going to happen is this is going to turn back into a normal node. But it's going to turn into a normal node and it's going to start with zero on the um, on its 
strength, if you call if you want to call it strength. It's gonna have zero in it. This can destroy the node, the same way as when you first start with Thumbcraft, if you're using an iron wand, it can destroy the um if you drain a node to zero it can damage it. So it, it'll no longer regain. That's energized. It's showing me there. When it comes back to normal it'll be zero. Let's uh I will wait and what's it up to? Back up to forty again. Let's turn that back on. And this shouldn't take much longer. There we go. So that's gone to zero. What I want to do, because that slows down the recharge, I'll turn the stabilizer off. So that should go up a little bit quicker because of these time torches. But hopefully that'll start going back up. If it doesn't, we've destroyed it. Uh, it's not going back up yet. We may have destroyed that. I'll come back to that in a second. How's this doing? I want a 20. That's still there. Haven't disappeared yet. So. Hopefully we'll come down pretty quick with this. Yeah, it's certainly going down quicker than before. So something's very different. We're up to 20 on that. I'll say that, that'll go back up again. And yeah, we're going back up. Cool. So that's going back up really slowly. And we'll see what that goes back up to. Now, I said I've done this earlier and it went to an 8, so instead of having, it's, remember we started, this had 70 something in it, when it came down it only had, it went to an 8, so this only should only go back to 64, we'll see. It might go back up to more than 64, I'm not 100% sure. I thought it'd only go back up to 64, when I did this earlier, I had an 8 that went down when I unenergized it. So when I energized it, I had a 64 that went to an energized 7. And when I turned the lever off, it went back up to 49 when it was full. But I think slowly it, it went back up a bit higher again anyway. What was this doing? I should have left that off to let that completely devour that. So we'll let that completely devour them. So that's the inefficient way, letting it completely devour. And we'll see how this chap's doing over here then. So you back up to 38 now, look. So we are losing a bit, but we're gaining more than we're losing. And that guy's going up really slowly. Why are you going up so slow? Are these not set right? That's set alright. Uh, that's set alright. That's going up slow. I, I expected that to go up a bit quicker. Uh, what was this doing? Down to 13 again. So yeah, I say I've got three survival series going on at the minute and I've done this wrong in all three of them. So this is information that I certainly didn't know and I'd like to think I know quite a bit about Thorncraft and I had no idea about this part. So like I say, we don't want to get that it goes to zero because it could just devour it completely. Oh, it was 22. That's back up to 15, right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the camera. I'm going to show you that this can go all the way to 42. So I'm going to have to take my word for it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spawn in any more nodes. I'm just going to let this go all the way up to 42. We started there, don't we? So it's going to take me a little bit of time. It shouldn't take too long. I'm just going to keep letting this eat this while I uh, watch a couple of videos on the YouTube. I'll be back in a little bit. Well, it looks like this has made a liar out of me because I cannot seem to get this to go over 32. Which is a bit unfortunate. That, I swear, was a 52 and I got it back up to 52. I've also, on I say the previous take, I've got I got a, a 46 Ignis up to 46. There was a, like a 70 Terra here. I had a 46 Ignis and I got that to 46. But this one, now the, the size of that is up to 34. So I don't know if it's, do want to go smaller than that? What a great informational video. I clearly don't understand it fully myself. But that is just not going over 32. But I swear, <laughs> you have to trust me on this. Uh, that. Well, that's just going back to 34. As you see. Come on. Come on. Ah, 33 at last. So it is still going up. You just want it to go all the way down. To get a gain there. Well, let me carry on then. I'll see if I can get it up to 42 still. 
So here we are then, I'm up to 41, I should be able to go to 42. It actually, it, must, it just got stuck on that 33 for a while. It, it, it gained like three or four really quick as soon as I as, uh, as soon as I got past that little hump there. So yeah, it just got stuck. I had to bring it right down to one, didn't I, by the look of it. But this should go to 42. No, we'll have to do one more, I think. So I actually went to zero there. I don't think I've damaged it though. No, it's going back up still. So uh, I'm with 42. So what I can do now, if you see, when, when I turn that back on, that was 30. So it's down to 30. But if we keep trying to put stuff in now, because the max size of that, its original size was 42, I'm not expecting it to put any more in. I don't think it'll put any more in than that. It may do, so I will try and run it one more time. But we'll see what it goes up to. So as you can see, if you can get the lever on and off at the right time to turn your stabilizer on and off then you can get the most out of a node if we go back across and look at these let's see what that's come up to it's gone up to 77 so yeah it does go back up that's all that's all good that's actually was that was that what it was 77 i thought it was 76 so it actually gone it has gone back to fully what it was which that's all right isn't it so it does not go it does not get diminished by um energizing it so that's very nice i'll have to check See what that was at the start of the video. I can't remember. I've looked at too many nodes. If you look down here, this node's completely gone, and we've only got like nine aqua out of it, so very inefficient. And that's the way I've been growing my nodes. So I've been doing it really poorly. And uh, now I'm going to do it this way from now on. So we're down to 28 there. I'm expecting to get no more out of that, but I'll run it one more time just to see. And because it's not going to put any more in there, we're not going to lose any more out of that either. So. We've lost like 14 out of that tool, haven't we? So it's gonna let's see if it makes me a liar again and actually goes higher than it was. It was a 42 to start with, one I'm sure it was. We all start looking the same after a bit. But there we go, I'm not expecting any more. And now if we turn that off, then that is gonna go back up to 28 because it's not actually giving anything. So that's now a permanent a maximum 28 node. So once you've got the most out of that, I reckon you probably just want to destroy it. But as you can see, by getting a couple of nodes, you can quite easily, you can be quite easy to get all your six primals up to 100. Pretty easily doing it this method. What we've got in Resident Rise, which is really awesome, is a mod called Awesome AG, which is a really cool add-on, and it really deserves to become a mainland Thaumcraft add-on. It should be in every pack that has Thaumcraft, same as Thaumic Energistics should be in every pack that has found craft and applied energistics. Autumn AG is a really really cool mod. Had some really nice things, this remote comparator being one of them. Comparators, vanilla and the uh, red power and stuff are really cool but they always have to be up against the block you want them to work on. The remote comparator lets you use this crystalline eye to link to a block. So if we look in there, what I've got here is, let's say, take that crystalline eye out of there and look at it. You see that? That's watching uh, block airy is what it's watching. It turns out it's actually watching this node. So uh, what I did, I, I shift clicked it on that. So it's got my, it's got the coordinates there, what it's watching. And I've got a remote comparator. So normally, let's just quickly show you a couple of things here. Let's go grab a bit of redstone, and let's grab a normal comparator as well, just to show you what's going on. So um, there's a vanilla one. I'll actually use a red power one, Project Red, even. I always call it red power. So on a node there, put some redstone down and get another crystalline eye. Uh, there it is. Just want one of them. I'll link it onto there. You'll see that this aura node isn't putting out a redstone signal on a normal comparator. It's also not putting out a redstone signal on the remote comparator because it's just a comparator, yeah? So normally we cannot get a reading of what is in that node. AutumnAG adds this block called a V-reader. And if we look at our thermal micron, I'll show you it in the AutumnAG tab. So AutumnAG down there. So there's our remote comparator there that I just showed you. It's quite easy to make. This red crystal is just crucible redstone with a bit of vitreous, which is very nice. And above that there, we've got this thing called a V-reader. And the V reader, what you can do with this is you can do a few things with it. Um, what we're doing here with it, this is a specific thing we're doing here, is if you put a 
remote comparator on top of a V-reader, it will then be able to read a node. So it can read jars and stuff as well, but the fact, let's just look at the, at the blurb there. Um, da -da 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 -da. The two ways this can work, placing the V-reader directly beneath the object to be read. So I could have a V-reader. So let me, um, like that, underneath the object that you want to read. So V-reader underneath the node is going to give us that, but we're going to want a stabilizer under our node, aren't we? So, where? No, in fact, the node we're going to be feeding off doesn't need a stabilizer under it. So you could have that there and then place your node that you want it to be devoured like that. Redstone signal in it. You don't want it right next to it because it's putting a redstone signal out. Let's see what happens here. This might actually be a lot simpler than I thought it was. Because when this gets down to zero, no, no, it's not going to do it right. It's not going to do it right. So yeah, it does. It does need a little bit more redstone because that's still going to put a signal out right. And I'll ignore that then. Because this thing puts a redstone signal out, what was happening there was because that node was there. It was putting a redstone signal into this, so it was actually turning this off. You'd have to do it a little bit more complex, but not massively. So basically, you've got two ways of reading this, and you can have it to read jars as well. So let's just show you. It's just kind of becoming a little bit of a mini spotlight on our automage at this point, isn't it? If we had a jar, and then let's get some, let's get some aurum. We'll do because I know how to spell aurum a little bit, and put a jar down. Fill it full of Aurum and put one of these guys underneath that. You'll see it'll read the jar as well. So it reads anything that has V in it, really. So there's one way of doing it. The other way is you can put a remote comparator on top of the block with a crystalline eye linked to whatever you want to read, and it'll read it that way. So that's what we're doing here. We are reading that node because it's got the comparator on and it's got the crystalline eye in. What you can actually do with a V reader, very clever, as you can see at the minute, that's putting out a Full redstone signal, 15 power redstone signal there. If we was to get a wand that I can drain something into, that one will do, because that should have nothing in it. I'll start going up because I've got uh, blood magic, but if I drain some out of that, there we go, you'll see that's gone down. See that's redstone there now? So this puts out a redstone signal comparative to how full this node is. Awesome, eh? I hope, uh, I think you can probably see where I'm going with this. If you right click on the V-Reader with a wand, you can see there's all this stuff here. One thing here, you can put jar labels in. So if you wanted it just to read one of the aspects in um, in a node, you can't go jar label like that, can you? No, you have to go like that. And then, yeah, with a wand, click in there. I can't remember if you do a jar label. Ah, now you do it. You got that, don't you? Something's hurting me. What's hurting me? I don't know. Something's hurting me. Weird. Um, I best stay in survival, uh, creative or die. So what you can do in here is you can filter this stuff so it only actually show. So it's not putting any signal out now because that's an Ignis node and we've just filtered it for Aurum only. So just show you what I'm talking about. I'll have Ignis and let's uh, so I don't die. Let's get a crafting bench and go eh. with Ignis and then wand. Put that Ignis one in there and we should get our reading out. And we have. You see it's gone back up to 10 because this is going back up to its maximum of 48. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is, see here we've got four of these disabled. We've got the output to all sides. What we can have is we can have one output into east, one output into south. That's east, that's south. And uh, one east, south, east. 
Why is that on? And that not. Uh, oops. Disabled, that's why. That's not on. There we go. Total. So, east is going that way. South is going that way. That's why I wouldn't show it, of course, because that was disabled. So, I've now turned that on. What I could do is I can invert one of them. So, now, this one's showing an inverted signal for that one. And automatic automatic adds also other things that help you work off signals like that, like the um, dense crystal and the um, redstone torch that inverts at an analog level rather than just on or off. So you can. What I'm getting at here is you could quite clearly easily set something up so that when you're using single nodes, you can get a comparator readout to turn off turn on and on your lever or a toggle switch or something because you can have it one when one gets to zero when one gets to 15 or whatever you can easily set something up so that you can automate this and you can get the most out of a node and you can automate it so that's kind of why i've gone a little bit off track at the end of this video showing you a little bit of uh, a tool there to make this even better so i shall be using that in my survival word i'm going to make myself a big all hundred node and uh, energize it so i've got an all 10 in my base on my Resident Raz 3 server play. Cool. So uh, I hope you like that. The other thing I've not shown in this is uh, this thing here. Capacity. Best leave that because I don't actually know what that bit does. <laughs> but there we go. That is node bullying. I hope it's understandable. Any questions, please ask them in the comments. Anything I've got wrong, please let me know in the comments and um, I will addend them or read all the video if I've got anything major wrong. And uh, I hope you found it interesting and useful. And now you all know how to get the most out of your nodes when you're growing a node. Okay, cheers. Bye.